Hi Roger, your new 9MWR. Just give you a quick walk around and, and instructions on the controls and whatnot. So we'll start around the back here. So these are your rear stabilizers. So battery is here, battery isolator. This is the fuse for the uh, alternator. So if, if the battery's not charging, that's the first place to look. Air filter, engine oil filter, engine oil dipstick. This is the, the heater tap. Got your exhaust there. No DPF, no AdBlue on these in Australia. And then up here, so you've got radiator, cooling fan, some valving, that's your main control valve and your coolant bottle. In this toolbox, we've got a heap of nice space in here. So um, tool bag, uh, operator's manuals. Um, this is a, a gas charging thing for your post driver. And then I'll come around to your twin tires. This is your diesel tank. And then in here, you've got your refilling. So you put that into a uh, jerry can and, and turn it on and it can refill your tank for you. So I'll come out onto the boom. So down here, you've got your integrated grab. I'll show you the controls for this when we get in there. And then around the front here, you've got auxiliary out. So this is if you're using an attachment below the um, tilt rotator that you need oil for. Uh, we set everything up on yours around the outside uh, for your post driver, etc. And then you've got your lifting eye at the back here. So that's on the top hitch. So you can lift without the tilt rotator attached. Um, you get rid of this weight. So, you know, your 300 odd kilos plus the integrated grab, you can drop that off without leaving the cab because it's EC oil. And then you can lift straight from that point. So another 300 kilos at full reach is quite helpful. And then here on this side, these are your, your couplings. So this is your main auxiliary line and this is teed into the engine con so we can either feed an attachment or the engine con and i'll show you how to control that very very simple to do this is your second auxiliary circuit on this side around to this side same deal main auxiliary on this side second auxiliary and this is your case drain line um, so with your um L, the uh, the post driver you've got your hammer which goes into the main circuit and then you've got your grab which goes into the second circuit so um the hammer will come actually to the return line only because you only need one direction so that'll go straight back to tank and the feed for the hammer is on this coupling and then the grab is on here and here so quite easy you can also still use it with the tilt rotator even though we're feeding off the same line we just press a button in the cab to choose either the tilt rotator or the the hammer circuit so that's it on the boom EC oil, so no hoses to worry about when you're using the um, engine con grab. So either you can use the engine con grab here or you can use it below the tilt rotator. So that's the timber log grab. Then you've got your view safe. So this is your, your safety system. So it has a magnetic sensor in the front and the back. So it'll sense if one pin is on or no pin is on, it'll be alarming. It has to see two pins in the right spot for it not to be alarming. So it's a safety feature. So onto the blade, you've got your hook and then you've got your trailer lights and I'll jump up into the cab for you oh behind here just before we go got your uh, window wiper bottle uh, and then your fuel pumps the air con there's your low port and the high port you just pull this cover off and it's up under there quite easy to get to when you get that cover off if you need to charge it don't lose the keys for the diesel cap they're coated if you lose it you've got to cut this off and, and weld a new bung on so um, if you're going to lock these make sure you don't lose the keys it comes with two sets of course so keep your spare set nice and safe just a, a road rule in europe um aircon panel filter here so coming up into the cab so steering wheel first pretty simple this is your um you know your, your horn your uh, lights and your indicators here, so this is your four wheel steering switch. So four wheel steering, two wheel steering, and then uh, crab steer. And then here you've got unlocked, automatic. So this is the oscillation lock. So this is with your, your wheels where you're, you're going on undulating ground. So always locked, automatic. So on automatic, when you put the brake on, the lock comes on. When you take the brake off, the lock comes off. Pretty handy, but you can override it. Leave it unlocked at all times, all locked. So you choose what you want to do there. 
Now onto the screen. So you've got, we'll just turn the key on. You've got your park mode, your operating mode, and then your road mode. In road mode, the joysticks are locked out. Nice and safe. Start, stop button. So start, stop, side camera, and then you just press the camera button here and it cycles between the, the camera options. So rear view camera, side camera. So then moving down, we've got the blade and stabilizers. So if you look at this screen, when you, you got these buttons, so here, hopefully I can show you. Yeah, here's good. So you press the blade and you see the blade come up here. So that's turning the blade on. So whatever's turned on, you got the stabilizer. So let's turn them all on. So if all three are on, when you move the blade lever, all three will move up and down. Turn the blade off, only the rear stabilizers. Turn the left one off, only the right will come up and down. So you can choose what you want on and off by just pressing the button, buttons and then uh, moving the blade lever. Quite simple. If we set up auxiliary um, outlet on your blade for you, you'll have the diverter valves down there. So you'll put, put your hoses in, put the valves across, and then when you're up here, if you want to use it, all you need to do is make sure you have the blade selected and move this blade lever and that'll supply auxiliary oil to your trailer. And then we've got your aircon control. So a little tip on this aircon control, when you've got the, um, I'll turn it on. So we've got the fan on here. When you've got the air conditioner on, a bit of a silly thing, but I'll go hot. You see that little blue that just come up then? That's still got hot on, so you got all the way up. You can see it goes to red, right? When you come back down, you get to there. It looks like you've turned the hot all the way off, but it's still got a little bit on. That keeps the heater valve open, so you're still gonna get hot air. So just make sure you're all the way down. See that little, there. Make sure you go. So just keep pressing the cold button there. You go all the way down. Something we need to update on the software. Um, so just make sure that you've got the heater valve all the way closed, then you'll get nice cold air. And then to turn the fan off, just press the, the fan off button, pretty simple. Um, turn the engine off so we can hear a bit better. Okay, so here you got your, your button, so you got your menu button, so you can come in here and change your settings. So you've got um, excavator here, we can go in and we can change our different options for what we want on. So what buttons on, on the joystick, we can configure, etc. The biggest thing for you to, to consider is the attachments, right? You come into here and we can change the attachments. Your post driver can't have any more than 40 liters per minute. So you have to select this mode, 40 LPM, for when you're using the post driver. When you're using the EngCon, you come back and select the EngCon. And you can see up there, the one you've got selected, when you push down on the knob, it changes. If you put 100, so EngCon is 100 liters per minute. If you put 100 liters per minute into your post driver, you will uh, damage the, the hammer. So 100%, you can't, you can't overdo that. So we've got a sticker here for you. And there's one on the post driver as well. So just keep that in mind when you pick the, the post driver up. You need to select the post driver as an attachment in here. You can rename these, so you can call it post drive if you want, and uh, EngCon, etc. So, so we'll just select EngCon, and then you got settings, so you can come in here and change your clock and, and turn the brightness up, uh, etc. So that's pretty good. Settings, put that on manual, good. All right, so. Uh, on here, you've got a button, very important, so I'll turn the engine on. Uh, oh, to start the engine, the neutral switch must, this is the FNR, so forward, neutral, reverse switch. This must be in neutral to start, so I'll turn it off. If I have it in forward, if I go to press start, nothing's gonna happen. It's not interested in helping us. That has to go into the middle there. Okay, sweet. Now, at the moment, you can see up here, the revs is on the dial. So that means this, you press this button here, it'll switch the revs across to the foot pedal. So revs on the dial, revs on the foot pedal. So now revs will work on there. So that's handy to keep in mind. If your revs is not improving because you're turning this knob, just, just have a look there, have a go on the foot pedal and then you can switch it there. This is eco mode, um, don't worry about that. Um, cruise control, um, cameras, and then your, your page button. So that's simple. Your aircon we've gone through. Here's your radio. Your microphone's just there for it, so that connects to your phone. Auto idle, uh, window wiper, etc. Uh, continuous flow for your attachment. So if you're using, um, let's say, a, a plate compactor and you want continuous flow, you just turn that on. Um, travel alarm to turn that off. It's quite nice. Uh, it'll always restart with it on, but you can turn it off. Um, that's your Engcon computer. 
Have we got any error codes or diagnostics to do? You can plug a laptop in with that USB cord, so that's quite handy. Cigarette lighter point, diagnostic point for the machine, cup holder, and I'll come around to this side. So this, this is the same switch as your FNR, but on this side it's your selector. So it's either, because we use the offset in the boom up the top there, and the second auxiliary circuit, for, so, so the grab on your post driver, um, you can only use the offset or the grab, and you select it with that. So it's the, the roller underneath here with your thumb, and then you just select it like that. We've got on the chart here, we've just shown you what rollers and buttons do what. And then you've got some quick information here. So um, what filters to use at what service, what oil, what type of oil, uh, volume of oil, you know, common parts that you might need down the line, uh, size of the tires and stuff, just to make your life a bit easier. And then um, on here, this is our, so this red switch, this is for the top hitch. So that's to drop the whole tilt rotator off. So be careful with that because you, you obviously don't want to lose the tilt rotator um, if you're expecting to lose the bucket. And then you've got your alarm to, to, to stop the alarm going off. So that's if you drop the tilt rotator off and you want to lift something with that lifting hook, you're not going to have an attachment on. It might be beeping at you. Um, hold that down for three seconds and that'll stop the machine's alarm going off. Nothing to do with the QSafe alarm, the EngineCon alarm, so separate systems. Automatic boom control. So this is manual boom control. When it's in this position, this foot pedal will do the additional cylinder. When you're in this position, this joystick does the dipper stick and the middle cylinder. We in Australia recommend that you get used to, uh, you know, we don't have many two-piece booms in Australia. So operating an excavator is normally a mono boom. So this makes it feel like a mono boom, fantastic feature uh, for us. Um, and then over here, what we do, this button here. So when you're lifting and you want you want the, the boom just to go straight up in the air, um, you can still make use of having the, the middle cylinder. You hold this button in. Now, when you bring this backwards, instead of this rear cylinder coming backwards, the middle cylinder will go straight up. So really handy if you've already got this all the way back and you just want to go straight up in the air without the dipper stick going out, you hold this button in and now this joystick only does the middle cylinder and this joystick only does the dipper stick. When you let go of that button, this joystick goes back to doing the middle cylinder and the dipper stick while this joystick does the back cylinder. So have a play with that, it'll make sense. It's an option, and for anyone else watching in the world, it's an option that needs to get turned on with the Mech Diag by your dealer. So it's a great little feature if you're used to a mono boom. Uh, a lot of people like getting used to, especially in a wheeled excavator, you've got your feet spare doing not much. You can get used to the third piece boom on here. Uh, on the MCR, you know, a lot of people in Australia like to use the foot pedals for traveling. You can't really take your foot off and, and use the third pedal. That's where that option was developed for us here. Um, so this is your bucket reverse. So it just makes, you know, when, when you curl in that way, the bucket comes towards you. If you've got your bucket around the other way, you curl in and it's like, oh crap, it's backwards. It's, it's, it's handy with a skid bucket and, and whatnot, so you can reverse it. This is reversing the direction. So if you're, um, if you're working over the other side of the um, machine, you know, the steering is gonna feel backwards and the FNR. So if you flick that switch, it'll reverse both of those so that it feels like it's working correct way around. And then this is your hitch switch for the bottom of the tilt rotator. So this is the EngCon system. So you come down like that, hold that down. You've got the red light on. That means you're in change attachment mode. Then you need to hold this pinky button in here. And then you use this slide switch on the top there, left and right, to adjust it. Now, when you, when you drop the bucket off, you pick the next one up, you slide it across the other way, that attaches it. Let go of your pinky button underneath and then make sure you turn this off. If you forget to turn this off, it'll time out after a while. And if you turn the machine off while it's in this position, when you turn it back on, you're gonna have an error code continuously beeping at you. That can be a bit confusing. So you might think there's something actually wrong. What you have to do is turn the machine off, make sure this switch is across to that position, and then turn the machine back on again, and then it'll be fine. You're also gonna get an error code if you drop the tilt rotator off, uh, it's not going to see the tilt rotator. It's going to think, oh, shit, where's my tilt rotator? You need to tell it that you've dropped it off. To do that, without this hitch switch on, you just hold this button in for three seconds, and that will um, turn it off. Now, before we were talking about the tilt rotator and the main auxiliary circuit, how you can use them at the same time together. So, okay, you can't tilt rot and rotate and then have your main flow on at the same time. But what you can do is use the tilt rotator, position your attachment, and then when you wanna send oil to the, through those main couplings so you, so you can get your higher flow, all you need to do is under here, you've got this button here, 
you hold that button in and it's called force shear mode. What that does is it forces the tilt rotator valves to stay shut, which then forces the oil to go to those couplings instead. When you hold that button in, then you use this slide switch, then you let go of that button underneath and then it will go back to the tilt rotator working. So move all your tilt rotator, get it into the position you want, hold this button in, use your main auxiliary circuit, let go of the button underneath and you're back to the tilt rotator working. So fantastic way to still get use of the, the high flow circuit, but use it for the tilt rotator as well. All right, mate, that's about it for your machine. So I'll give you another little walk around and then um, we'll get it ready to go.